Hello everyone, today we will talk about the anatomy of the phrenic uh, vagosympathetic trunk inside the thoracic cavity. But before, I would like to go through some of the structures we explained in the previous video, including the aorta. This is the aorta here, and the first branch from it, which is the brachycephalic, which will give the left and the right subclavian arteries. We talked, if you remember, about the uh, first branch of, from the Brachycephalic, which is the costocervical trunk. Here we have the costocervical trunk from the left, the left one, of course, from the left subclavian artery. The next branch from the left subclavian artery is this one here called the deep cervical artery. This is the deep cervical artery, which will go to the neck and uh, supply the neck muscles. As you remember, we say that the deep cervical artery uh, comes directly from the subclavian artery in the horse, while it's a branch from the costal cervical trunk in other animals. So from the subclavian artery under the structure, which is the brachial plexus, we can see the next branch, which is the vertebral artery, the vertebral artery, which will move to the transverse canal of the cervical vertebrae, of course. The next branch before leaving the thoracic cavity, it gives the subclavian artery, gives the superficial cervical artery, this one here. Inside the thoracic cavity and before leaving the cavity, it gives also this branch inside dorsal to the sternum called the internal thoracic artery. This one, the internal thoracic artery. After that, the left subclavian artery leaves the thoracic uh, cavity through the cranial uh, opening of the thoracic cavity and form the axillary artery to the forelimb. If you remember, we said that next to the axillary artery, we can see this big vein, uh, the axillary vein. The axillary vein meets somehow inside the thoracic cavity with the external jugular vein. This is the external jugular vein to form the brachycephalic vein there, which will continue to form the cranial vena cava to the right atrium of the heart. The brachycephalic trunk, after giving the left and the right subclavian arteries, continues cranially there to form the bicarotid trunk, which will move and leave the thoracic cavity to give two big arteries, one on the left, one on the right, called the common carotid arteries. Here we can see the left common carotid artery, this one here. Now let's move and talk about the anatomy and the topography of the phrenic nerve. From this area here, the ventral branches of the spinal nerve C4, C5, and C6, if we zoom in now here, so from C4, C5, and C6, they come together to form the phrenic nerve. The phrenic nerve moves caudally into the cranial thoracic opening into the thoracic cavity, as you can see there. This is the phrenic nerve. At the level of the heart, it moves exactly at the base of the heart here all the way back and gives several branches for the innervation of this muscle here which is called the diaphragm so here we can see the phrenic nerve how it gives several branches to supply the diaphragm this is on the left side of course we have another one on the right side after we learn the anatomy of the vagus we will be able not to mix this one with the vagus nerve because they move inside the thoracic cavity somehow next to each other. So this was the phrenic nerve. Now we are in the neck area. As you can see here, we have the common carotid artery, the left one next to the common carotid artery. Exactly, you will find this very important nerve called the vagothympathetic trunk. The vagothympathetic trunk moves all the way back as one nerve just in front of the thoracic, cranial thoracic opening, 
it gives two branches the sympathetic trunk which moves dorsally and down here we have the vagus nerve so the sympathetic and the vagus nerve they enter the thoracic cavity separately here we have the vagus nerve if we follow the vagus nerve we will see the vagus nerve at this level here this is the vagus nerve so if we look at the vagus nerve you will see the first branch of it inside the thoracic cavity this branch moves just behind and curved behind the aortic arch this is the aortic arch here to give the recurrent laryngeal nerve which we will find it after it moves around the aorta on the trachea on the lateral side of the trachea there and from there it will move all the way up to the larynx for the innervation of the laryngeal muscles that's why we name it as recurrent laryngeal nerve so back this is here the vagus with the recurrent laryngeal nerve after that the vagus nerve moves all the way back if you follow it under the the aorta until it reach this structure in background is the sevigus here gives two branches the ventral branch of the vagus nerve this one here if you follow it and dorsal to the sevigus we have the dorsal branch of the vagus nerve so it gives the dorsal and the ventral branches the dorsal branch from the left vagus here meet with that one of the right side to form one trunk called the dorsal vagal trunk the same for the ventral vagal trunk both of them dorsal and ventral to the cervicals move through the hiatus of the cervicals through the diaphragm to the abdominal cavity if we go back to this area here so we talked about the vagus nerve this here now uh, we will talk about the sympathetic trunk the sympathetic trunk enter the thoracic cavity through the cranial thoracic opening just behind the first rib it meets with this very important structure very very important structure here so this is the sympathetic trunk it goes to the ganglion stellatum or stellate ganglion or we can name it as the cervicothoracic ganglion this ganglion is the fusion of the caudal cervical ganglion plus the first two thoracic ganglia to form the ganglium stellatum from the ganglium stellatum the first branch we can see here is the vertebral nerve vertebral nerve which will move next to the vertebral artery there into the transverse canal of the cervical vertebra so this is the vertebral nerve after that the sympathetic trunks moves backward upward under the spine on the ventral surface of the thoracic vertebra all the way back from the ganglium stellatum we have some other branches to innervate sympathetically all organs and structures inside the thoracic cavity for example this big nerve here as you can see it comes also from the ganglium stellatum and called the cardiac nerve because it moves all the way and innervate the heart sympathetically cardiac nerve from the ganglium stellatum as we say the ganglium stellatum is the fusion of the caudal cervical ganglion plus the first two thoracic ganglia there is a connection between the ganglium stellatum and the middle cervical ganglion this connection will happen through this nerve here or this branch here to form the ansa subclavia this branch connects the ganglium stellatum to the middle cervical ganglion and the subclavia now let's uh, look at some other structures we can see in this area including the trachea so this is the trachea in the neck area it enters also the thoracic cavity here we can see the trachea which moves a little bit more caudally 
and at this level here it gives the two principal bronchi one to the left one to the right lung if we go back here just to the left of the trachea we have in the neck area the cervicus which will move at the beginning of the thoracic cavity and inside the thoracic cavity the cervicus is located dorsal to the trachea the cervicus moves all the way back through the thoracic cavity and finally it goes through the diaphragm through the hiatus of the cervicus and of course to the stomach here behind the diaphragm we can see the stomach what else we can see inside the thoracic cavity if we look there up we can see this big muscle called the longus coli or the long muscle of the neck it starts from the ventral surface of the first a few thoracic uh, vertebra and it's on the ventral surface of the um, cervical vertebra what else here in front of the heart we can see part of the cranial lobe of the right lung this one here while behind the heart and in front of the diaphragm there we can see the accessory lobe of the right lung located inside what's called the mediastinal recess and if you remember we explained this recess in other video so here I will put my hand inside the mediastinal recess it's very important to know where we can find the accessory loop of the right lung this is everything for this video don't forget to share this information with your colleagues see you very soon bye bye for now